Altman plot or we can uh, call it as BA plot right so uh, having a short name is so easy to uh, say so BA plot what is this all about what is BA bland Altman plot so um, it's a tricky question and a tricky thing to understand but here in peace chat all is easy and i am going to produce you the to the ba plot in the most simplest way you have ever seen so let's begin so what is a ba plot so it's a just a plot it's a, the name itself showing it. it's a just a data plotting it is used to, for analyzing the agreement between two different essays so what do you mean by that it means that if you have a two method and those two method are used for a single thing then we are analyzing whether those two methods are equal or not all right so now you may have a question so if we are seeing the agreement between two methods then can't we use correlation because we have heard of a term named as correlation in statistics right so what is this correlation so we can look into that matter so what is correlation so correlation is just a relationship between two variables so it can only access the relationship between those two variables and note the difference between those two variables so we have a method one and we have a method two let's say for example uh, i'm testing a measurement of uh, of a cube let's say uh, about a cube so i'm just uh, measuring the measurement of those cube with uh, with a system and another thing with my hand so i have with system and another is with my hand or by scale something so I am measuring those two and if those measurements are almost similar then we can say that either of these two can be used right so otherwise we have to stick on those measurements which has so precise so BA plot is similar to that so why we are constructing is, is to understand whether two methods are similar or not so it gives us the agreement between two variables by studying the mean difference and constructing limits of agreement so we can look into it so to do it in SPSO so this video is consisting of how to do the BA plot in SPSS so you may already now know about what is BA plot and why we using it right so to do in SPSS we have six simple steps so the first step is select two continuous variable of interest that is you have to measure so as i said if we are taking the measurement it will be in continuous scale so we have two method which are measured for the same measurement and we have those measurement in a continuous or numerical scale or numerical value so what is the step two we have to find the difference and the mean of those two methods that is the step two so what is step three it's simple you have to use the difference and you have to test the hypothesis that those difference are almost same that means those difference have a mean value of zero so what does that mean what is, that means that those two measurements are almost same because they have a mean value of zero when they are subtracted from each other so next step is step number four is that you have to make sure that p-value that statistically significant p-value should be not significant i mean those p-value you are getting should be greater than 0.05 so if it is greater than 0 0.05 we say that it is as not significant so if we get that difference as not significant we can proceed to the ba plot why why what does that mean you may have a confused in that why we should have a 
non statistically significant p value so simple because we are testing that the difference should be similar or almost coming to zero that is there is no difference between those two method so when you are considering that there is no difference between those two methods so you are null hypothesis now there is two type of hypothesis maybe you have familiar with that so there is null hypothesis and there is alternative hypothesis so our null hypothesis will be there is no difference and alternative will be there is difference between those two methods so if you get a p-value as significant you have to say that there is difference between those two methods so here if we get as non-significant only we can say that there is no difference between those two methods so step number five after you have confirming that those two methods are almost similar you have to create a scatter plot a scatter plot with the mean on the x-axis and the difference on the y-axis now step number six you have to plot three lines in the scatter plot first will be your mean or it is known as the bias second will be your upper limit and third will be your lower limit these are known as limit of agreement so upper limit can be calculated from mean plus 1.96 in the standard deviation so that means from the mean value the 95 percentage of your data should be lying between the upper limit and the lower limit and from that limit you can say that these two methods are similar or not so now let's see into the SPSS and check how it is done for real SPSS, wow, what a nice software we have. Because uh, this bland and my plot is so simple to do in SPSS rather than doing in R and Python. So, so simple in SPSS. I bet you in that. So, you, we can look on this PA plot in SPSS. So, as I said, we have two methods. So, method one. And we have method two these are almost similar method now what was our first step we have to take the difference of these two methods so I have taken the difference between these two methods so that is my first step so my first step was actually take two continuous variable and these are two continuous variable second step was taking the difference and the mean so you can see I have taken the mean so what does this mean mean of these two observations that is 20 plus 20 by 2 20, 19 plus 20 by 2 19 21 plus 21 plus 2 21 like that so you have to find the difference and the mean of the two variables that was your first initial steps you have to do the next step you is you have to find whether this difference is statistically significant or not for that you have to go for one sample t test and you can find it on analyze compare means one sample t test so here what we are going to find is that whether these difference are significantly bigger or not so we are saying that this difference is zero so we are testing that this difference as zero so i will have my difference so my difference and testing it as zero and click on options and okay options there is nothing so we are going to come to this plot and i will show you how we are coming to this plot all right so firstly we have to do with the t-test and we have done the t-test and why it's taking time yeah 
I would take the skin. Come on, T. I need some tea break. Because it's taking some time. Yeah, we good. So this was my method. These were two methods. So I have taken the difference and I have checked with the test value of zero that those difference are almost zero. So here I go the p value is not significant. So this means that these two methods are almost similar. So when we are taking the measurement, these two are giving almost similar measurement. So once we have the p value as not statistically significant, we can go for the BA plot and we can do it in the graphs. Uh, on that legacy dialogues you will have your scatter plot and on the scatter plot you have to give always remember you have to give the difference in the y-axis and the mean on the x-axis so this should be always in your mind because y is your dependent variable and mean is your independent variable so you have to remember of those and click on ok your scatter plot will be displayed here now why 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 it's taking time SPSS come on man you can do it you have to show that you're better than R all those colors you can show come on come on boy running graphs why I have taken time. So, once you get your scatter plot, here it is coming. Processing. My God. So, once you get with your scatter plot, as I said, you have to make three lines. So, one is your mean, second is your upper limit, and third is your lower limit. So what is mean? Mean. So mean we have it as 0 0.04. That is the mean difference. That means the difference between those two methods. All right. And we are taking that average. That is mean difference minus 0 0.04. This is also known as bias. So we have a bias of minus 0 0.04. So your scatter plot will be available like this. You have to click left mouse button two times then your graph editor will be opened full so you have your graph editor chart editor whatever you can call it as so on the chart editor you will have options of creating a line horizontal line so here it is this is for horizontal line this is for vertical line so horizontal line my difference was minus point zero four so I'm applying that um I don't think so it was minus zero point zero four I have to yeah minus point zero four so I have given that line here as my reference line so my reference line is given I can give my upper limit and also my lower limit so one point one zero this was my lower limit lower limit upper limit also i have to give these are all adjustment in the ground so okay you can have a uh, kick on on your crowns so you can have a good understanding on it so this this is my upper limit this is my lower limit this is my mean or the bias so these are the interval and 95 percentage of my data should be lying in these intervals now you can say okay all right we have those intervals so is this uh, okay for my to say that my two methods are same so you may have a question about that right so it depends on the researcher so if i am a clinical practitioner i would set before starting this experiment i would set that these two difference have a limit of let's say around 1.5 centimeter on positive and negative if i am checking like that i have a limit 
of below 1.5 on positive and negative side so i can accept these two these methods as same that means i can use either of these two methods there's no need going for two methods so one may be cheaper or one may be more quicker or simple so i can go for that method instead of the other method so automatically in a closer it will be on here and if you put some coloring and effect on those graph editor you can have a proper visualization of your b a plot so i think that's all for today uh, video i think you i hope that you all understand about b a plot and this is the best way to say it. so simple ways so sometimes uh, people may opt for a regression after constructing the ba plot to check whether these two whether there is some proportional bias between the variables difference and the main variable so you can do for regression also so you can go for regression linear regression is the opt one and you have to make sure your dependent variable is your difference and independent variable is your mean and you can create a regression on those two variables to check whether those two variables are proportionally biased or not here we getting it is not as not significant that means there is no proportional bias so if it, there is some proportional bias then our ba plot uh, is somewhat not correct so we have to run again the analysis using low transformation of these two values that is you have to take log values instead of 20 you have to take log 20 log 90 like that for these two and you have to do and repeat the same steps as above so here we got at as non significant that means there is no proportional bias if it was less than 0 0.05 we have to say that there is excess some proportional bias and then we have to do the steps again using the log transformation so this is uh, an additional case there is no need of going for it just to understand that whether there is proportional bias or not otherwise you can stop the test this is the ba plot bland and man plot all right so that's all for today's and i if you like it click on the like button and subscribe for more videos that will be uploading soon by me bye bye